Hey everybody, <clears throat> uh, Happy New Year. Hope you're having a good holiday. I just wanted to do a little review of radioactive decay, nuclear physics, so we can uh, hopefully not have to review too much when we get back. Um, hope you had a safe and fun Happy New Year. Um, and I'll see you in a little bit, but I wanted to get some review out of the way. So let's say we got a big rock and we put it on a table. And we have a Geiger counter. And this counts decays. And so we get this click, click, click. And our clicks per second is our activity. It's weird lighting here, sorry. Um, and that activity is the, it's the change in nucleotide. So if you're using your Geiger counter, you're gonna get this, you're gonna count the number of clicks in a certain amount of time, and that's gonna be your activity. It could be, it could be decays per second, decays per minute, decays per year. Uh, and if you measure that decay over time, the activity, the number of decays per second or whatever, is going to decrease as the number of nuclei decrease. So n we say is the number of nuclei. And this sample is going to be uh, something that's decaying spontaneously, transmutating into something else. And of course, that's going to follow this basic curve. This, we might say, is the y equals um, 1 over e to the x, or the y equals e to the negative x. For our radioactive decay, this is going to be the number of nuclei, and this is going to be time. Um, it also could be, I'll say, or activity, because the activity decreases per time as well. You can think of the activity as the slope here. What's interesting about this 1 over e to the x function is that the slope at any given point is going to be equal to the y value. So on 1 over e to the x, the slope right at the beginning is going to be negative 1. And this value, the y value, is 1. Down here, where you're at, say, half of what you started with, your slope will be negative 1 half. Now, of course, different uh, samples are not going to have the same rate of decay, right? And so we have to kind of change our y and our e axes. So this is the same as y equals e to the negative x, of course. So for radioactive decay, we change this simple relationship into n equals n naught times e to the negative lambda t, okay, or our activity is equal to the original activity times e to the negative lambda t. Okay, so you get what t is. t is time. So we've changed the x into time. Instead of negative x, it's negative lambda t. But what's this lambda? Well, the lambda is the likelihood, it's the probability of any nuclei decaying in a short time. So if you just pick up all these little nuclei in here and you say, what about this little nuclei? That one right there, what's the probability of that decaying? Well, that would be your lambda, but it has to be for a short time, okay? So this here's your tying formula. The activity is equal to lambda n. So lambda is the it's going to be what relates your activity and the number of nuclei you have. So, of course, the activity per nuclei you have is equal to lambda. And this stays constant for any given sample. So if you have, you know, uranium-238 is going to have uh, a, very, um, a very small lambda. You're going to have very few decays per nuclei because it has a long half-life, slow decaying. Um, and uh, other things like thorium or palladium might have bigger ones. Um, 
but it will stay constant. So the activity will change, come down over time, and the number of nuclei will come down over time. But your lambda will stay the same for a given sample all the way through. Okay, um, that's, the, that's the basics of the formulas. So let's do a little problem. Let's say you have, uh, let's say you've got some, some rock here. We don't know what it is. And you take your activity and your A at some point in time is 21 decays per second. I'll say that's S to the negative one. Okay. And then uh, some time goes by. Let's say 360 minutes go by. And you check your <clears throat> activity again, and now your activity is only 5.3. You kind of average it out over a few seconds. And so now you're only 5.3 decays per second because you have less nuclei to decay and so you get less decays per second um, and the question is what's the half-life of this material so we say the half-life is like this um, and I better I better fill you in here otherwise you won't do this problem uh, what is our lambda with respect to half-life well it's kind of interesting what lambda is, is the ln of 2 over the half-life. And so you could also say, okay, my half-life is equal to the ln of 2 over lambda. Why that is, is because if your uh, the t over, oh wait, uh, yeah, no, that's right, um, the t over the half-life. So if you think of this as this little lambda as ln of 2 over the half-life, t over the half-life is the number of half-lives, right? So if you think of it this way, t over the half-life, and this, this half, don't get confused with that, it's just a subscript. But the t over the half-life would be your number of half-lives. So not the length of one half-life, but the number of half-lives that you have in total, okay? And so that would be like your x value going one, two, three, four. And if we're using the, the um, if we're using the half-life, we have to multiply it by the ln of two because if you, if you remember your half-lives, and this is just a bit of a side explanation, but the ln of two is equal to the negative ln of one half. Okay. It's the same thing because um, this is, sorry, this is a negative ln. Yeah, I think that's right. So this is the ln of 1 minus the ln of 2. Okay, the ln of 1 is 0. So if you take this to be negative, it's going to be positive ln of 2. Okay. The ln of 1 half is because when your nuclei number is half of what it was, then your your x value has to be, if y is equal to 1 half, then x has to be something that would, brought to the power of e, it would have to equal 1 half, right? So this has to be the ln of 2, because if you ln of both sides, um, you're going to get negative ln of 1 half, because you want y to equal 1 half. Okay, that's kind of an aside. But this is why this is ln of 2. It might be like, you might be thinking, why is it ln of 2? Well, it's really negative ln of 1 half, but it's easier to say ln of 2. Okay, and so lambda is ln of 2 over half-life, and half-life is ln of 2 over lambda. So here's your rock, and here's your two activities. Uh, one is measured, and then you wait 360 minutes, and you measure the other one. What's the half-life? So pause it here and try to solve that. Okay, so how do we do this? Well... Our trick here is to find our lambda because we know that our formula, A equals A naught times negative lambda T is true. And so we can treat this as A naught and this as A. And we can say that A over A naught 
is equal to e to the negative lambda t. We know the t because the, the time between measurements is here, 360 minutes. Okay, and so how are we going to get our half-life? Well, lambda is equal to the ln of 2 over the half-life. And so we're going to insert that into here, and we're going to say a over a naught is equal to e negative ln of 2 over the half-life all times t. Okay, and so if we take the ln of both sides, I don't know if you want to put the numbers in first and do this, or um, if you want to change around the formula first, you can. Um, we can do that if you like. If, we're, if we ln both of these, you're going to have the ln of all of this, a over a naught. And when you ln all this, it just ends up being the exponent. So now you have negative ln of 2 over half-life times t, and we want to solve for that half-life, so we're going to bring the half-life up, and all this garbledy gook down, a over a naught times the time, and if I put in my a and my a naught and my time, you're going to get somewhere around three hours, I believe, pretty close, I think it was 181 minutes that I calculated quickly on my calculator. I think this is pretty close to three hours. So if you get three hours, 